Hey, my name is Ben. Thanks for stopping by. Today we're going to be going over the diagnosing process for an electric tank type water heater. Now most electrical testers will be able to perform the functions that we need. Simple continuity mode where when you press the leads together it makes a beeping sound like this. That is a really useful feature for this, but we're also going to be looking at how many ohms of resistance that we're getting between different components in the system. The things that we're gonna be testing in this video are all the primary components of an electric tank type water heater, including the upper thermostat, lower thermostat, and the electrical element that actually does the heating. Also, at the end of the video, we'll take apart this upper thermostat, and I'll show you guys what's inside of it and kind of just explain how this device works. It's actually pretty cool. We're actually going to disconnect the power and then go through the full troubleshooting process with no power at the water heater. Towards the end of the video though, I'll come back and we'll hook things back up again and I'll show you a few tips for how you can check what's happening with the power turned on to the water heater. Now this applies to pretty much all of the different tank type electric water heaters that you're going to come in contact with. The one right, that I have right here is a marathon water heater, so it actually has like a fiberglass tank, uh, but the electronic components are identical to a metal tank, standard like 50 gallon electric water heater. So I have the power turned off to the water heater now. We'll remove these covers, both this top cover right here, as well as this lower cover down here. Now we're still going to treat this as if it were live until we actually get our uh, electrical tester and ensure that there is no power. So we're going to remove this plastic cover here now and the way you do that is you can just pop it loose from the top edge like this and then it'll completely just come off like that. And then you can see we have lots of exposed terminals here which is why we have to be so careful. So here's our electrical tester. We're going to put it in volts alternating current to make sure that there is no power coming into the water heater, which there is not. And if we verify from each leg to ground, we have virtually zero volts as well. So we are clear to continue the troubleshooting process and we're going to go through this upper thermostat, the elements, and the lower thermostat. Go ahead and snap a picture of the wiring so that you don't lose track of where anything was. So in order to thoroughly test these components with no power, uh, we're going to remove all of the wires so that we can do that. So these are the wires, uh, 120 volts each, that feed in. These are our main power leads, so 240 volts between those two wires. We have our electrical uh, tester just set to scan mode which is going to automatically be in continuity mode. You'll see that when I cross these terminals it'll make a beeping sound just like that. So with that in continuity mode we're ready to go ahead and test this upper thermostat. So these top two terminals up here are connected to each leg of 120 volts and then we have this reset button and all that this really is is to disconnect power if there were to be some kind of a situation where the tank overheated because the contacts fuse closed or something like that. So this terminal is supposed to pass through straight down to this terminal and this one's supposed to pass through straight down to this one. So if this were tripped then we would get no continuity between these but if it's not tripped we should get continuity and also basically no ohms. So we'll go ahead and check the first side and we're getting zero ohms there, so that means that that is closed. And then we'll check the other side here. And we're getting zero ohms there as well. So we know that, that top switch is fine, it's connected through. And so that brings us to the actual thermostat portion of the thermostat. And basically we're just switching one leg of power. So these two wires right here were normally connected to this terminal and they just go directly to one side of the elements. You can see how this blue wire here just kind of loops down and connects to one side of the element. So one side of the element is always powered with 120 volts. And then the other side is switched by this thermostat. So we're gonna go ahead and just check to see which mode the thermostat is in because the way this thermostat works is it heats up the top element first and once 
this has reached temperature, it switches over and sends power down to the lower elements because it doesn't run both elements at the same time. So right now, if we test between here, because this is, this is our power coming into the thermostat, test right there and test this terminal, and between those you can see it's an open lead, there's no continuity there. Now if we go from this terminal to this terminal, it should be closed, which it is, which means that right now this thermostat is powering the lower element. Now sometimes you can test this by rotating the temperature dial up or down and it'll switch between the two uh, terminals but right now I had it mostly turned up so I can't turn it up high enough to get it to switch back to heating this upper element. It's no big deal. Uh, I'm pretty sure that this thermostat is still fine but just understand how that works. So a little bit more about this uh, switch up here. This top switch is designed to trip if the water exceeds 180 degrees and that would only happen if there was some kind of a malfunction with one of the thermostats. So if this thermostat was uh, stuck closed on one of the elements on this upper element here, uh, it would overheat eventually and this would trip out. Sometimes they call these an eco switch or emergency cutoff switch or high limit safety thermostat switch. So just know there's a little bit of variance in terminology for what these things are called. If your upper thermostat did trip out, I would recommend going through this whole video and troubleshooting all of the components before you just go ahead and press it and say, oh, we're good to go. Because usually those trip either because there's an issue or because the switch itself could be failing. So if you troubleshoot everything and everything seems fine, then it's possible that you may just have a bad uh, limit switch there. And if that's the case, you, you will need to just replace this entire upper thermostat. I will link to all the different parts, replacement parts for fixing this in the, in the description below. And these components are really pretty inexpensive. So a lot of times what we'll do if we have an issue with the thermostat is we'll replace the thermostat, the upper thermostat and the lower thermostat at the same time, just cause they're so inexpensive and then you know that you're going to be good to go going forward. So now we're going to go ahead and test the element and even though these wires are still connected, they're not connected to anything on the other end so it doesn't matter, we can leave those attached. Now we're going to ohm out the element, otherwise if you just want to think of it as continuity, that's sometimes an easy way to check, uh, but basically if this beeps when I put this across here, it means that the element is probably fine. So we'll go ahead and just use our probes and go from one terminal to the other. And you can see right there we're reading 13.2 ohms. And now if I look down in here I can see that this is a 240 volt, 4500 watt element. Here's another element so you can see those markings. Uh, you can see this one is another 4500 watt at 240 volt. Uh, one interesting thing is on the other side it actually gives us the alternate rating if this were to be connected to a 208 volt um, system then we would be at 3500 watts instead of 4500 watts. So depending on how many watts your element is you're going to have a different number of ohms that you could expect. A 3500 watt element should read somewhere around 16 ohms. A 4500 watt element should be register between 12 and 13 ohms and a 5500 watt element should register between 10 and 11 ohms. You can see we are reading right at about 13 ohms so we know that this element is good. Now the last thing that we want to check with the element is between each lead and ground. Since the frame of the tank is grounded usually you can just test right from here to each one of those terminals and we should have no continuity there. And you can see right there, it's saying open lead. There's nothing there. And we'll go ahead and check the other side. Nothing there. When elements start to go bad, what can happen if um, there's corrosion, significant corrosion on the element? It can start where it's basically leaking current uh, or electricity into the water of the tank. And sometimes that can be the cause of if you're getting a little bit of like a shock when you uh, turn on the water and you're washing your hands, sometimes it can be a bad water heater element that is allowing some of the current to flow into the tank and into the water. So by checking that we eliminate that as a problem. 
Real quick before we diagnose that lower element, if this video is helpful or if it's earned your subscription, I'd really appreciate it if you would subscribe right below this video and then click the bell to turn on notifications. According to my YouTube analytics, 91% of the people in this last week who watched my videos were not subscribed to the channel. And that's because YouTube is really good at following you around and showing you the content that you want to see. But for creators like myself, if I'm going to continue to do this, I need to be able to rely on you guys to be able to be a part of this community. And now let's get to that lower element. All right, here's what the lower thermostat and lower elements look like. We're obviously going to disconnect the wires here so that we know for sure when we're testing that we are not reading something incorrectly. Now as you can see this lower thermostat is much more simple in the sense that it is just two terminals here and with those two terminals they're either going to be opened or closed. So right now we'll just check between those two terminals and see what it is reading and it is reading zero ohms. So right now we know that this is actually connected. It is trying to heat up this lower element right now. So if there were power coming down this wire and they were connected, it would be heating, which we'll demonstrate that here in a few minutes. We'll reconnect everything and then I'll show you how to kind of troubleshoot this all when it's live. Um, this is the better way to go since everything's disconnected, it's much safer. So we know that that is closed right now. So if I turn this thermostat down, it should disconnect those terminals, so we should be able to listen for a click. I think I heard it click. So I have it turned all the way down now to see if it disconnected those, and it did disconnect them. So now you can see the thermostat is off. So it is working, so we'll turn it back up again. And there we heard it click back on. All right, now our final thing is to check our uh, lower element to make sure that the element is good and that the ohm reading is correct. Uh, the, the red wire up top is disconnected, but if you want to be extra safe, you could connect both of them. I'm pretty confident that we won't need to do that. And we're getting right around 13 ohms again, and so we know that that lower element is good. Let's check from each terminal to ground. It's measuring it as if it's a capacitor right now in my electrical tester because it's in scan mode. It's trying to um, determine what I'm testing automatically. So if I go straight to ohms, then you'll see that there is no continuity there and no continuity there. So everything is good to go on this lower portion of the water heater. So we'll get everything reconnected and then we'll come back and I'll show you what's happening when the power is applied. All of our wires have been reconnected so I'm heading over here I'm going to turn the power back on to the water heater. Obviously if you're going to be doing any troubleshooting while the power is connected it's uh, imperative that you are extremely careful with where your hands are and where your tools are and all that. So the first thing we're going to check is just to make sure that we have 240 volts coming in the top. We can just put our electrical tester into volts alternating current mode. We have this black wire on the left, that is one leg of 120 volts, and our red wire on the right here is uh, our other leg of 120 volts. And between the two, we should have around 240 volts. So we'll go ahead and just use one hand if possible when you're uh, testing this, because it's safer than using two hands. And you can see right there, we do have 249 volts. So we have full power coming into this unit. You can also check from each leg to ground if you feel like it. This is going to just make sure that we have our 120 volts on each leg. And we indeed we do. Now that brings us to this upper thermostat. That's the first component that the power runs through. So the upper thermostat, um, this top portion right here is just a reset that if it were to be tripped, it would disconnect this terminal from this terminal and this terminal from this terminal. So if we leave our uh, voltmeter in volts alternating current, what we can do is we can just put our, ter our probes across each terminal where it should be connected through. So this one and this one, you can see we have zero volts reading across that. And that means that this is connected. This terminal is connected to this terminal. Check the same thing on the other side and we have the same thing. So right now we know that this is not tripped, which is great. So we know that this top reset is working correctly. If it was not, when we checked across these terminals, it would have showed 
either 120 or 240 volts across here. But if there's no difference in voltage, it usually means that that is closed. So it's basically as if we we're, you know, testing two spots on the same wire, you would obviously get no difference in voltage there. So what we're doing right now isn't the final test for being able to confirm exactly which part is bad, but it's just giving us an idea of what is going on. Right now we've eliminated the reset as a possibility, so we'll keep on going. So now this is the upper thermostat of the water heater. And the way this works is that uh, the upper thermostat will heat this top element of the water heater first. So when you first turn on your water heater, it will be sending power from this terminal to this terminal, which as you can see runs down to the element. And the other side of the element is always powered. You see this uh, blue wire right here coming down and hooking to the other side of this element? that is always connected. So we have one leg of 120 volts that's always going to one side of the elements. And then the other side of the element is going to be switched by either the upper or the lower thermostat. So when it first comes on, it's going to be sending power from here to here. And then that will heat the upper element. Once the upper element and the uh, top portion of the water heater has meet, met temperature, the thermostat will switch from connecting from here to here to connecting from here to here, which is this red wire which goes down to the lower thermostat. So right now we can check with our voltage difference to see which mode this upper thermostat is in, because I'm not for sure which mode it is in right now. So we'll go ahead and just check here to here. And right there you can see we have a difference of 250 volts, and that means that this is open between these two points. If it was closed, then it would be reading zero volts. So right now, this thermostat is likely sending power down to the lower thermostat. So let's uh, go ahead and check the second one here. If we check across there and there's zero volts, which there uh, there is, that means, like we just said, the power is coming through from this top, through this upper reset, down to here, to the thermostat, and right now it's jumpering over to this red wire, which goes down to the lower thermostat. Now just for fun, we'll check the uh, across the elements right here, um, these two terminals on the, the face of the element, and you can see that we have zero volts, and that's because right now this upper element is not being powered. <coughs> Basically, this uh, blue wire is coming in, powering one side of this element, and then the power is flowing through the element and then back out this wire. So right now the reason it's reading zero volts right there is it's as if we're testing two spots on the same wire again and because there's no place for the power to go to because right here is a dead end because this these two terminals are not connected right now. If this element was currently being powered we would read 240 volts across the top of the element. But you see, even though it was reading zero volts right there, that doesn't mean we have zero volts present on the wire. There's just zero volts difference between those two points. So if we go from one of these screws to the frame, you can see we're getting 124 volts because we are reading one leg of power, which is coming from this side right here. Power comes in, goes through the reset, because it was the reset is not tripped, and then it goes on this blue wire down to that side of the element, so we are still getting 120 volts on these terminals even though this element is turned off. Real quick, just wanted to mention uh, this green wire up here is coming in, tying to this aluminum plate, which is acting as our, our ground. Uh, normally if you had a metal tank, the tank itself would be grounded, and you may or may not have a green wire present in this particular compartment. You'll always have a green wire present where your first electrical connections are made that will be grounding from the uh, grounding system in your wire coming to your water heater to the tank of the water heater. But since this is a fiberglass tank, they had to add this aluminum plate to do that same thing. All right, let's move on to the lower element. Okay, here is our lower thermostat and our lower element. You can see that here I misspoke. This red wire coming down from that upper thermostat connects to this uh, element directly, whereas the black wire then, which is coming from the opposite leg, is what actually feeds this thermostat. Either way, it's going to work exactly the same. 
So we still have our tester and volts alternating current. We'll go ahead and just test across these two terminals here. And we'll see if this is open or closed. There we go. And it's at 250 volts, meaning that this is currently off. So uh, right now the thermostat is disconnecting these two terminals from each other. So there's no uh, power going to this element. Uh, but if we were to go ahead and just test across these anyway, we're going to get the same thing as up top. We are reading zero volts because we're essentially testing two spots on the same wire. But then go again, going to ground, we have our 125 volts. Since the upper thermostat is currently sending power down this red wire and this black wire is directly connected to the other leg, uh, we should be able to have 250 volts between the red wire right here on this element and the black wire on this lower thermostat, which we do have 250 volts. So basically right now, the only thing preventing this lower element from running is this lower thermostat. So everything is working as it should. Let me see if I can adjust this lower thermostat to come on. We're going to turn this up and we should hear a click if it is, does decide to come on. Here we go. Yep, and it did click. So now, this lower thermostat is turned on. So when we measure the voltage across these two terminals, we should have zero volts, or virtually zero volts, which we do. So that's good. And now we will have 240 volts across these lower terminals. Now just for fun, if we want to measure how many amps that lower element is drawing, and then we'll also be able to calculate the wattage if we want to, um, we'll just do that really quick. Let's put this into amps alternating current. We'll just clip it around one of those two leads. It actually doesn't matter which one. I could even clip it around this black one up here. So we're drawing 17.75 amps. 17.75 at, we'll get our exact voltage reading here, 243 volts, 243.2. So since we're drawing 17.75 amps times 243.2 volts, that gives us a total wattage of 4,316. So out of that uh, 4,500 watts that we're supposed to be drawing on this lower element, we are very close to that. And so depending on our voltage coming into the water heater, our wattage would be either more or less. Um, should be less, usually you're not going to get much over 240 volts, but sometimes you will have a little bit lower than that depending on. Again, it's just like this uh, element here says 4,500 4, watts at 240 volts or 3,500 watts at 208 volts. I will link to the common uh, replacement components that you'll be needing for this particular repair if you do end up needing to replace some parts. They're pretty inexpensive. This is the upper thermostat, lower thermostat, and an element. And if you were to just pick up a set of these just to have on hand, it wouldn't be a horrible idea. Uh, but if you do end up having to replace a thermostat, I was just going to say replace both the upper and the lower thermostat. They're inexpensive. So just replace both of them and you're a lot less likely to have issues that you're going to have to deal with in the future. So the component we're going to disassemble is just this upper thermostat here. And I'll show you a few different things about it that are kind of neat. The internal components of the lower thermostat would be very similar. So this reset is actually just connected to the upper thermostat by this little jumper here. So we're able to uh, dis remove the screws so that we can separate these two components. However, it was still riveted and connected in the back. So we did make a cut here so that we could remove this back metal piece. Uh, so let's just get these kind of separated here if I can. There they are. When we remove the back cover, oops, we'll see that we have this little disc inside. And this is a... So this is the upper thermostat thermal disc. This little disc right here is what is responsible for uh, turning that water heater element on and off. So as this increases in temperature, it'll pop one direction. And as it decreases in temperature, it'll pop back the other way. And the way the temperature is adjusted is the pressure on this little spring piece here is increased or decreased using our temperature setting right over here. So depending on how much tension there is on that lever, that will increase or decrease the amount of temperature required to cause this thermal disk to move back and forth. So these can get weak over time and can fail uh, just because the temper of that metal is lost or is has changed or as over time. 
Now this is the reset control, and this also, if we turn it over and remove the back cover, you'll see that we do have a thermal disc inside of this component as well. Now this is a much stiffer uh, disc in the sense that it requires more force to pop back and forth and also a higher temperature. Now it also is not auto resetting. This thermal disc over here will reset automatically once the temperature comes down enough. This one will not. So once this one pops one direction, it will not return until we press this reset button right here, which presses through on this uh, this plastic component here, and I think a camera, oh yeah, right here. This end right here is what pushes against that disc to reset it. So that's the difference between an auto-resetting thermal disc and a non-auto-resetting thermal disc. Now, another component that this is common to see in is this uh, rollout switch here. This is from a furnace, actually. And this also has a little thermal disc inside of it that is like this bigger one here. It You have to manually push that in order for it to uh, actually reset the switch. So now I'll show you one fun thing that you can do with these discs, and uh, it'll be fun. You'll see. So this is more exciting if you have uh, observers to see what's going to happen. So that's what we have here. Now this pot is upside down, and we have this thermal disc that is right on top of that pot. So we're going to go ahead and start the burner. And now Havla, you just watch that thermal disc, okay? Are you watching it, Havla? Mm -hmm. Keep watching it. Once it reaches 180 degrees, something might happen. Watch it, Havla. Make sure it doesn't move, okay? Now we can manually reset this disc just by pushing it the other direction, like that, and then we can set it on the pan again. If you want to keep learning about diagnosing different equipment, I'll put it together a little playlist right over here where we can continue to learn some of those things together. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you right over there. Hi. I'm just uh, videoing here. Come in, come in, come in. Okay. You don't want to interrupt.